Hi, I'm Hillary at Lighthouse Communications. Recently, I was helping our founder, Anne, develop a story for new facilitators joining our team. We use a five-step storytelling formula that I'm going to teach you today. Developing a story can be hard. You, um, you had, you, you. But using this formula will make it so much easier. You'll end up being able to tell clear and compelling stories. We're going to go through each of the five steps as we watch Anne tell her story. The first step to any great story is dive into the action. So many people start with a lot of unnecessary context, like, I want to tell you a story about a time that X happened. It was back in 2018. No, wait, maybe it was back in 2017. I guess it doesn't really matter. Ugh, don't do that to us. Just dive into the action and you can save all those extra details once you're into the story. Let's watch how Anne dives into the action. Hey everyone, welcome to the onboarding training. In March, 2020, COVID hit and overnight threw me into a professional crisis. Anne captures our attention right away. We want to know what happens next. Notice Anne used what we call a time marker, March, 2020. Now that's a vivid one. We all have our own associations of what happened in March, 2020. Your time marker doesn't have to be that evocative, but using a time marker will definitely help you dive into the action. Examples of time markers include two years ago, or last October, or my first day on my new job. The next step, step two is show not tell. Share enough descriptive details so that the audience can really imagine being in the setting with the characters. Think about what language you can use that evokes the senses, sights, sounds, smells, tastes. And remember the phrase specific is terrific. Let's listen to how Anne paints a picture with her words. Pre-COVID, I had been teaching and presenting in person for years, and I was confident. I was at a place where I could walk into a room of 100 people present and feel totally at ease. Then overnight, there I was staring at this computer in my home office, trying to make sense of what was happening in the Zoom room. Are people listening? Are they doing emails? Am I bombing here? What is going on? So you've dived into the action. You're showing, not telling. Step three is build tension. Tension is critical to a great story. It could be external tension between two ideas or two characters. Think of a reality TV show. There has to be tension there for us to keep watching, right? It could be two roommates like each other or two roommates dislike each other. Or the tension could be internal, something you're worried about, stressed about, or you're just not sure what to do. Without tension, the story will fall flat. Your audience is left wondering what the point is. But with tension, the audience remains engaged because they want to know what happens next. A great way to find where the tension is is to ask yourself, what's at stake for my characters? What are my characters thinking? What are my characters feeling? And then a great way to show not tell with tension is to share the internal monologue that one of the characters is having. After each class, I would rush to read the evaluations hoping to get some sense of what they thought about me, what they thought of the experience. And every time there was the smallest suggestion, I would take it as a personal attack. And I found myself ruminating over this feedback, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., completely losing sleep. Then one day, out of total desperation, I called my friend Lauren, who's an executive coach, and I told her what was going on. I said, Lauren, I don't feel like myself. What should I do? Is there a coach I should work with, a book I should read? All right, now the tension's reached a boiling point. There's a climax. And on the other side is step four, share the shift. What shift or change has happened as a result of going through this experience? Remember, any great story has transformation. Let's listen. And Lauren paused and she said, and I don't think you need to do anything else. You already know what you're doing. But it does sound to me like you're putting an awful lot of stock in what people think about you rather than focusing on how the content will help the people in your classes. And when she said that a light bulb went off, of course, that's exactly what I was doing. And in the stress of this crazy time, I had lost focus in something so fundamental that we actually teach in our classes. And sure enough, once I started to make that shift to focusing on the students and helping them, I did start to feel more confident. 
Yes, Anne had a realization that she was too self-focused. So instead she returned her focus to helping the audience understand her message. And because she did that, she regained her confidence. So now we're on our final step, step five, connect the dots. By this time, your story is probably finished, but you still need to tell your audience why you're sharing the story. How is your story relevant to them? How is your story relevant to illustrating your message? The magic phrase to use that helps you connect the dots is, I share this story because. Give them one or two sentences, nice and slowly, make that connection crystal clear. Don't make your audience work too hard to try to figure out what the connection is, and don't assume your audience implicitly understands why you're sharing the story. Let's watch how Anne connects the dots. I share the story with all of you because you're about to join Lighthouse, and we're so excited about that. And you're coming at a time when we are going to make another transition back to in-person facilitation. And it is my hope that in this time, this transition, we can really support each other and help each other stay focused on what matters most. And that is our content helping people. So there you have it, the five-step storytelling formula. It works like a charm. Remember, creating great stories takes practice. Contact us with questions. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like. If you've got questions and comments, feel free to leave those below. And finally, if you're interested in a training for yourself, for your team, for your company, feel free to reach out at info at lhctraining.com. We'll see you in the next video.